As Buddha sat with his disciples, one of them posed a question, Lord, what is karma? Buddha responded by saying he would share a story that would help them understand it better. He then proceeded to narrate a tale to his disciples. The story I would like to share is about a king who was touring his kingdom on an elephant. As they passed by a shop in the market, the king stopped abruptly and said to his minister, I have an urge to hang the owner of this shop, but I'm not sure why. The minister was taken aback, but had no opportunity to inquire further, as the king had already moved on. The minister visited the sandalwood shop the following day, and disguised himself as a local. He struck up a conversation with the shopkeeper, and asked how his business was doing. The sandalwood merchant responded gloomily that he had very few customers. Despite visitors admiring the quality of the sandalwood, they would leave without purchasing anything. The only way the merchant saw his business surviving was if the king of the kingdom died. Then there would be a high demand for sandalwood for performing the king's last rites. And as he was the only sandalwood merchant around, he was confident his business would pick up after the king's death. The minister realized the reason behind the king's strange desire to kill the shopkeeper. He thought that the negative thoughts of the shopkeeper had affected the king, and he had felt the same negativity within him. Being a wise man, the minister contemplated the matter and decided to test his theory. He disguised himself and went to the same shop the next day without revealing his identity or what had happened before. He asked the shopkeeper if he could buy some sandalwood, and the shopkeeper was happy to oblige and handed over the sandalwood to the minister. Upon receiving the gift, the king was delighted with the quality of the sandalwood. He turned to the minister and asked, Who is this merchant? He has sent such a fine gift. The minister replied, He is a sandalwood merchant from the market, your highness. The king then decided to reward the merchant's kindness by sending him some gold coins. As he did so, the king also felt a sense of remorse for his earlier negative thoughts towards the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper was overwhelmed when he received the gold coins from the king. He exclaimed, Your majesty, I cannot express how grateful I am to you for this great kindness. You have saved me from the brink of poverty. He then went on to praise the king and express his repentance for his previous negative thoughts. I was foolish to have such negative thoughts towards you, your majesty. Please forgive me. I now realize that my own selfish desires were clouding my judgment, said the shopkeeper. Buddha shared the story with his disciples to explain the concept of karma. He concluded by saying, If we have a good thought for others, it will come back to us in a favorable way. But if we have negative thoughts for others, then those thoughts will come back to us as retribution. He then asked his disciples, Now that you have heard the story, can you tell me what karma is? Upon hearing the disciples' responses, Buddha considered them for a moment before speaking. Those are indeed actions and outcomes of karma, he said. However, the root of karma lies in our thoughts. It is our thoughts that shape our words, deeds, feelings, and actions. Thus, your thoughts are your karma. If we observe our lives, we will realize that we often receive what we give to others. If we harbor negative thoughts towards someone, we might unknowingly attract negative thoughts towards ourselves from that person. On the other hand, if we think positively about someone, we might attract positive thoughts towards ourselves from them. As a final word, my dear disciples, Buddha said, always remember to keep your thoughts pure and positive. Cultivate kindness and compassion towards others, and the universe will reciprocate with kindness and compassion towards you. This, my dear ones, is the essence of karma. As they heard Buddha's message, the disciples paid close attention and felt inspired by his words. They understood that their thoughts and deeds had a significant influence not only on their own lives, but also on the lives of those around them. They made a commitment to be more aware of their thoughts and to cultivate kindness and compassion in all their actions.